Hello, my name is Maxim Planeta. Today I want to present you our joint work called Migros, Transparent Life Migration for Containerized RDMA Applications. Containers are convenient units of application deployment and administration that become even more widespread for data center applications. Containers offer a lightweight isolation mechanism separating software sec of the guest system from the host. A seemingly orthogonal trend is the growing performance of data center networks. Just recently, server NICs offered up to 40 gigabit Ethernet throughput, modern high-end NICs go up to 400. This 10 times in the less than a decade growth has not been matched from the CPU side. As a result, traditional CPU-hosted socket-based TCP IP network stacks are not sustainable at such data rates. We believe the answer to this situation is a wider adoption of our domain networks by the data center applications. And here is where fast networks con and containers clash. Our domain relies on giving applications direct access to network device, which creates a hole in the isolation layer created by a container runtime. This direct device access complicates, for example, live migration. Although live migration works with modern container runtimes seamlessly, if an application uses TCP IP based networking. In this paper, we address this fundamental conflict between performance and isolation in a specific use case of enabling live migration for RDMA applications. Doing that, we emphasize two following properties. First, containerized applications must not require modifications for live migration support. Second is, and no overhead property, an ability to live migrate should be available without adding any overhead during normal operation. Otherwise, we will have misaligned incentives. The user pays for a feature the cloud provider benefits from. Live migration is a popular tool for load balancing, fault tolerance, administration and debugging. Live migration must transfer the state of a running application without noticeable disruptions neither for the application nor for its communication partners. Live migration consists of checkpoint, saving the application state, state transfer, and restart. Important part of restart is recovery of active network connections by the OS to ensure disruption-free operation. This disruption-free uh, reconnection of RDMA network is the main concern of our paper. Now let us look into how RDMA networks improve performance so that it becomes apparent how RDMA complicates live migration. The picture shows communication with a traditional network stack. When the application on the left sends a message, it makes a system call pointing to the buffer with the message content. The kernel copies the buffer to a special NIC accessible memory and triggers the NIC to send the message. The situation on the receiving side is similar, where the kernel will handle interrupts from the NIC, copy the message buffer and wake up the application. Two of the ways our domain networks improve performance are following. First is zero copy. So instead of managing two buffers for each message, the RDMA API obliges the application to use NIC accessible memory from the beginning. Second is OS bypass. Instead of going through the kernel, the application triggers the NIC directly. In the context of our paper, it is the OS bypass that creates the biggest hurdle. On the one hand, OS bypass is a good thing because it, makes a, it takes away work from the, from the CPU and improves uh, the overall performance. On the other hand, it increases CPU utilization due to complex API, forces complex AP, uh, programming interface on the application developer, and most importantly, deprives the OS from its traditional role as an entity that controls, allocates, and schedules all the system resources. A role that is especially important in virtualized and multi-tenant environments. We propose a solution where the OS, in cooperation with the NIC, can take back the control over the active RDMA connections. To understand the problem of saving RDMA connections better, consider the following example. An RDMA application shares three queues with RDMA NIC. A send queue for outgoing messages, a receive queue for incoming messages, and a completion queue for completion notifications. All these queues represent a connection state, which is a part of both the application and the NIC state. To make a checkpoint, the OS must freeze the state of the application, then serialize and dump it to some storage. 
The OS can stop an application, preventing it from changing the, its own state, but it cannot stop the NIC in a non-disruptive way to prevent the NIC from changing the state of the connection, and therefore also the state of the application. Specifically, the NIC may be triggered by arriving in-flight messages while the checkpoint is still in progress. This will result in lost state update. Now let us look into one of the technical details about RDMA communication. In RDMA API, a connection is represented by a queue pair object. The queue pair object can be in one of the multiple states. For example, when it is created, it is in the reset state. When Q, Q pair can be, then queue pair can be transferred to the init state and get assigned to a physical port of a NIC. Next, a queue pair can be assigned to a remote source queue pair when transferring to the ready to receive state. Finally, a queue pair get, gets assigned a remote destination when transferring to ready to send state. Now queue pair is fully operational. Other state transitions include loop transitions or transition to an error state. With this knowledge, I want to present you the core idea of our paper. Consider two applications running on the nodes 0 and 1, communicating with each other over two Q pairs. Both of the Q pairs are in a ready to send state. Now assume the application at node 0 migrates away. We introduce a new stopped state, which the OS will transfer the Q pair into during the checkpoint in phase. Now, if a message arrives from another Q pair, the stopped Q pair will reply with a negative acknowledgement of new stopped type. This negative acknowledgement will bring the Q pair into, uh, at node 1 into paused state. This is the second state we introduce. Now the Q pair can be destroyed and recreated at another node. Before restart I can complete, the operating system sends a new resume message to the paused Q pair. The post queue pair returns to the ready to send state and uses the source address field in the resume message to remember the new location of the migrated queue pair. After the resume message is acknowledged, the communication can resume as normal. Live migration has been completed without state loss. The remainder of the paper focuses on demonstrating that the proposed protocol changes are small, practical and can be integrated into the existing infrastructure. Consider a containerized application that uses OpenMPI library to communicate with its peers. At a lower level, the application will rely on IBverbs library for RDMA API. It uses a device-specific user-level driver to interoperate with the RDMA NIC. For control plane operations like the registering a NIC accessible memory or changing a queue pair state, the application must go through the kernel to generate to a generic RDMA driver called IBCore and a device-specific kernel-level driver. When the OS wants to migrate the application, a container runtime like Docker uses a tool called CRIU, stands for Checkpoint Restore in User Space, to save the state of the container with all its processes. CRIU will also use IBverbs library to save the state of their RDMA objects. Part of the state is device specific, so user level driver also takes part in saving the state of the RDMA connections. As we mentioned previously, one of our goals is to make sure that the software inside the container requires no modifications whatsoever. And this is the case in our architecture. We modified both the kernel uh, components, but in a way that these components maintain uh, their backwards compatibility with a version running inside the container. Similarly, we also modified RDMA libraries used by CRIU to enable checkpoint and restart. At a checkpoint, the queue pairs go into stop state and at restart they send out resume messages. The changes to the host do not impact the software inside the container in any way. RDMA communication can go through multiple protocols. For our project, we chose Rocky V2 protocol, one of the most popular RDMA protocols for data center networking. Rocky V2 sends InfiniBand protocol formatted packets through a UDP socket over a specific well-defined port. Rocky V2 protocol typically runs in a hardware of a NIC, which includes splitting a message into packets, formatting packet headers, ensuring reliable transmission, replying with acknowledgements, etc. Our changes touch all these parts of the protocol. Unfortunately, we cannot change an already existing device. 
we do not have an access to a hardware emulator of RDMA NIC, and the available FPGA-based implementations are lacking in functionality. Instead, we opted for using a software implementation of Rocky v2 protocol called SoftRocky, which runs as a Linux kernel module. SoftRocky driver implements the same functionality as a Rocky v2 NIC, but on a CPU. This, of course, has significant performance overhead, but in exchange gives us flexibility in changing the protocol and ability to integrate with complex applications. Our changes apply to other Rocky v2 implementations and can be generalized to other InfiniBand protocols as well. The main thesis of our paper is that few non-intrusive changes to the underlying RDMA communication protocol, in our case Rocky v2, enable transparent live migration without adding overhead when migration is not used. This means that our paper must show the following points. Changes are indeed small at the hardware level and backwards compatible at all the levels. Performance of normal operation is not affected. Additionally, we want to show that other software level interception based techniques cannot provide the same properties as Migros, otherwise the proposed hardware changes are not justifiable. Finally, we want our method to be practical by demonstrating the following qualities. Live migration performance remain, uh, remains fast despite handling our domain networks. Migros can migrate complex applications and Migros can be integrated with the existing container runtimes. We address all of the points above in this paper but in this talk I will focus only on motivation and practicality. To show that a hardware-based approach can be beneficial, we compare an execution of a latency measuring benchmark running on Connect X3 40 gigabit Ethernet NIC without any form of software interception against two other techniques, DMTCP and FreeFlow. DMTCP is a library for transparent checkpoint restart of parallel applications and FreeFlow is a software router for RDMA communication. None of these techniques offers live migration support, but both of them uh, intercept RDMA API in software in a way that could have been theoretically employed by Migros. As a baseline and as a, re and as a representation of Migros, we chose native execution because, as we show in the paper, the protocol modifications we propose add no overhead to normal operation. This way, FreeFlow increases latency for each message by around 0.4 microseconds and DMTCP by around 0.6 microseconds. Although for larger messages such increase is negligible, if an application communicates using small messages, the latency can increase as much as 50%. This situation violates our no overhead goal. In our second experiment, we would like to demonstrate practicality. This time using SoftRocky for RDMA communication to have an ability to migrate. Here we migrate containerized MPI applications from NPB benchmark suite. We in initiate migration roughly in the middle of the benchmark execution time. For that, we use our small self-written container runtime that in contrast to, for example, Docker, uses performance optimizing features of Crew. For this particular experiment, we relied on saving checkpoint in memory and parallel transport of the checkpoint, which works as follows. Instead of saving the checkpoint locally, Crew sends it directly to the destination node, reducing the overall, over, the, reducing the overall delay imposed by the migration operation. Therefore, in this figure, the checkpoint phase includes both the checkpoint and the transfer operation, because both phases start almost simultaneously. Whereas the transfer phase in this figure is the phase of exclusive checkpoint transfer. Depending on the application image size, the migration takes between 0.8 and 1.2 seconds. In conclusion, we propose to add two new states and two new message types to Rocky v2 protocol to enable no overhead live migration. We prove these changes to be necessary and sufficient by making small modification to the existing production level software stack, kernel drivers, crew, libib verbs, enabling integration of RDMA applications uh, migration into existing container runtime and orchestration tools. Thank you.